What's going on everybody, LYH Tutorials back here today and we're going to learn about some of the basic tools of Vectorworks to get us started. Uh, so here is our basic tools that we're going to go over. And just to start, we're going to have our selection tool. This is one of the key binds that you always want to basically remember is X. Uh, we're constantly switching back to this button. So remember X and just press it after every command to basically cancel whatever you're doing. Uh, to pan, we're going to use our space and left and right click. You can also just move over to the pan tool, which is H. You can also use your middle mouse button to pan as well. Uh, next one we're going to go over is zoom. So zoom, you can either use C or you can just simply use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, you can also adjust it up here in the tool tab. Um, and the other thing that we want to kind of just look over is I'm just going to make a rectangle really quickly. Uh, and then we, we have these zoom options here so we can fit to page area. So this is our page here. You can also zoom to the objects like that. Uh, and here obviously you can zoom in and out like this. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and go ahead and delete this. And the command for that is delete on uh, your keyboard. Next one we're going to go over is a text. So text, you can uh, basically type text self-explanatory. Now the shortcut for that default is one. You can obviously change it. If you go up to your uh, tools workspace, you can edit your current workspace and then go ahead and change some of the tools in here. So you can see that basic tools and you can go ahead and just change everything in here. We're not going to do that uh, just for the sake of the defaultness, but we can click on anything and basically just start typing, right? Now, after we do something like this, you can adjust uh, you can see right now that it has a white background. We can obviously switch that off and change it to none here. It's going to be gone. If we want to have another color, maybe we want it to have a light green, we can do that. Uh, same thing with the stroke, right? If we want this to be white against the green background, we can do that. If we want to change the font, you're going to go here, go into text up here, and you can change the font up here. You can see all the different fonts uh, basically come out. If you want to change something like Butler, you can do that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and Oh, one, one more thing is we can also change the text size, right? So text size, uh, if we want to make it bigger or smaller, you can do that there as well. And go ahead and delete that. Next thing we want to do is the callout tool. Maybe we'll just keep this for the callout tool. So the callout tool is uh, just making a callout to your drawings. You can hold shift to make everything orthogonal. So if I want this to be a call, we can say uh, maybe this call is just calling out text. Um, so it's going to make a nice call out simple for us uh, saying text and you can go over here, change the arrow, uh, have no arrows. You can play around with everything here. You can even change it to the different uh, letterheads such as uh, circles, you know, void circles, X's. It's really whatever you want. You can also adjust the different styles in our property tab here. So that is our call outs. Uh, next one I'm going to go over is just a nice simple line tool. So uh, that's two. Uh, you can have different modes here, so you can either have the two different ends or you can start from the center. So obviously the two different ends is just uh, one end to the other, whereas the center, you basically stretch out from the center. Uh, the double line is also very, very useful, especially if you're drawing walls or anything similar to that. Uh, you can change the separation here. Maybe we want to change it to something a little bit. Oh, we can't really see that. So I'm going to change it back to 25. And we can basically have two lines drawn at the same time. Uh, now these ones options on the top is basically where the line starts. So if you want to have something uh, where it's following the top line, you use the first one. If you want it to follow the bottom, you can see that it is now following the bottom. If you want to follow it in the center, it's going to follow in the center in this, uh, in this selection. And then the final one is custom. So you can basically adjust where that is. Um, and then after you made a line, it's going to make it into a uh, polygon. Now we can change that over here if we double click on this. Oh, sorry. If we just, uh, maybe I'll just draw another one. So if we do something like this and we do that and then we change this so that it doesn't create a polygon, it just creates lines. It'll just create lines for us like that. Okay. Uh, in order to select everything, we can just drag our cursor across the screen. Uh, but sometimes it's really weird because it doesn't pick up everything. Um, in some of the other programs, you can just select the other way and it selects everything. But in Vectorworks, you have to hold Alt and it'll help us do that. So this is just everything it touches, it will select. Whereas if you don't hold Alt, it's not going to select anything. 
So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Uh, rectangle tool, obviously uh, very important. So you have four modes for rectangle tool. You have one vertice to the other vertice. You have from the center. Uh, you have from one side to the other side. And finally, you have basically extruding one of the lines like that. Uh, so those are all of our rectangle tools. And it's really similar for all the other ones, right? So rounded uh, rectangle, you can um, change the different uh, corner diameters, right? So um, this allows you to do that. Uh, you can have circles, and obviously there's a different mode for circles. Uh, so you have the radius mode, you have uh, diameter, right? Uh, you have diameter, circle by three points, three lines, point and center, as well as tangent and center mode. So you guys feel free to play around with that. But there's many, many different ways to make uh, every single shape in Vectorworks, which is great. Uh, and again, that's the same thing with oval tool or ellipse tool. So the arc tool is one that's uh, fairly interesting. Again, it has many, many different modes for everybody to explore here. Uh, I believe the one that I do use the most is uh, something like the tangent line mode where it goes up and tangent and then you can choose from that tangent where this line goes or where this arc goes uh, so i find this one pretty useful uh, especially if you're drawing anything that's uh, in orthogonal orientation uh, anyways moving on we're going to do uh, the freehand tool which is alt 5. now this one is super super interesting and i actually adore this design for any concept uh, drawings uh, if you're not using your pen and paper so basically correct whatever you draw into a nice uh, polygon like this. Sorry, not polygon, but a polyline. Um, so if you want to draw, I don't know, like a nice bean shape. Oh, oops. Just make sure you guys are double clicking in order to kind of finish the drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Go back here and I'm just going to draw like a bean shape, double click. And it's gonna help me fix that, right? So it's gonna have uh, a nice shape for me that I can now edit and do whatever I want with this, uh, which is very, very useful if we're doing any sort of. So polyline tool and 2D polygon tool uh, are both kind of similar. It's just the 2D stays on one plane, whereas the polygon tool, you can actually make uh, different planes. But really it's just making a shape or a polyline um, from the lines that you draw, right? Same thing with our 2D polygon tool like this, like that, okay? Um, now, if by any chance you guys want to change the shape of these polygons, we can either scale it here like this and it'll basically stretch and scale this shape. Or if we just wanna, I don't know, edit one of the faces or one of the vertices, we have to double click into the shape. You can see that now the constraining box is on the shape itself. And we can select from these different modes, right? So I believe this mode right now, we can basically stretch out the surface and it'll stretch it out infinitely like this. If you want to just stretch out one of the vertices, we're going to use the polygon tool here. Uh, and then it's going to help us stretch out the vertices here. Now, keep in mind that Vectorworks is a BIM software. So every time we do this, you can see that um, things like the X, Y will change as well as the diameter and perimeters and the area will change if we do something like this, right? So um, Vectorworks is fairly smart and a uh, BIM software, so we can do that um, whenever we really need that. Uh, this is uh, really important for drawing walls, anything like that. So the double polygon line tool, and you can specify the width of your wall or whatever you want to draw. And same thing with our previous double line, right? Um, it's gonna have controls for top control, bottom control, center control, or custom control. And you can basically just do this, double click when you're finished, and it'll create that line for you. Uh, again, if you want it to be a nice polygon, you can go into this selection, change the, uh, change the setting of this to create polygons, um, and then it's going to help you create a polygon. Okay, Just make sure everybody's double clicking when you're done with the command. Uh, now, next one is going to be the eyedropper tool. So for example, if this was a green um, polygon and we want this to follow the attributes of that, we can basically uh, use this to pick up the color, just simply left click on the one you want to copy. And then over here, what we're going to do is press Alt, press Alt, oh, sorry, sorry, not Alt, Control. So with the eyedropper tool, we're going to go over here to pick up whatever we really want this to become. So pretend this is a green polygon, we want this to be green as well. Go over here, press Control, you can see that it turns into a little bucket and click the shape that you want to convert it into. Uh, you can also change 
uh, what you want by double clicking into the eyedropper tool. So these are all the attributes it's picking up. Um, so uh, some of the more general ones are over here, right? So fill pen attributes. Uh, whereas if you're going into things like viewports and uh, sheets, you can uh, play around with some of the other ones. Just know that you have a wide a range of options to basically copy over settings into another object. Okay, so next one is going to be our select similar tool. So again, similar to our eyedropper tool, we can go in and customize what's going on. What are we selecting um, to basically pick up some of the same things that are happening in the drawing. So for example, if I switch that on and I just want these green uh, polygons with black outlines, I can click on this and it'll select both of these. You can see I can move both of them around. Um, and it won't select anything else that doesn't have the same attributes as the ones that I have selected here. Again, to go into this, you either need to double click on it or just simply click right here. All right, next one I'm gonna introduce is going to be the rotate tool. So rotate tool has a really weird hotkey, uh, alt and equal sign, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and ignore that. You need to basically select one point and then select another point and you can rotate it uh, to whatever degree you want. Then you can press tab and change this. So if you want it to 45 degrees exactly, it'll help you do that. Uh, make sure you click left click and then it's, there it is, that's it. That's all you need to know really for the rotate tool. Just, just know that you guys should usually select the object first before using it. Uh, otherwise it'll prompt you to select an object. Uh, next one is going to the mirror tool. This one is just uh, equal sign. Again, very, very self-explanatory, you mirror something so you can select the point in space where you want it mirrored. You can see it's gonna give me a preview of it. Now, the option I have on right here is that it's gonna duplicate it. You can switch that off and delete your original input. Um, either way, it's gonna mirror along the line that you specified. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna go over is the offset tool. Um, actually, let's go over the fillet tool as well. Uh, again, very, very, Self-explanatory is basically filleting two different edges. So you select the two edges and it's going to create a nice fillet, fillet, fillet. How do you guys pronounce this? Let me know in the comment down below. But yeah, so it's going to create that nice uh, radius for us. If you want this to be a little bit bigger, we can do that as well. And you can see that it'll create that for us as well. Nice. Okay. So uh, the offset tool is going to help us offset whatever shape we want. So again, have the shape selected. We're gonna go into the offset tool and it's gonna allow us to change the distance up here. Uh, it's also gonna allow us to either copy it or delete the original. So if you wanna copy it, we do something like this, it'll copy it. Uh, if we wanna delete the original, we can do this and it's gonna delete the original. So uh, let me just show this one more time. If we send this to the back by using control uh, B or just moving it off, you can see that it's made a duplicate. So that's basically our offset tool. Um, and that's really uh, almost everything. One more is going to be the move by points tool. You can also use this uh, by using control M. This is one of the options that I actually do use a lot. So um, control M is going to be the Hail Mary, I think of well, like moving things around, right? You can drag things and move them to a point, but it, what's gonna help us is using the control M command. Um, make sure you have something selected, control M. You can move from one point to another point like that. Now what you can also do with the control M command, or sorry, shift M command is uh, you can make copies of it. So it's, it's kind of like an array tool as well. So I'm gonna go in here and you can see that it's gonna allow us to move and duplicate, uh, distribute and evenly space things out. So the one more I like to use is just this one because it allows us to use the ends of the polygon and make duplicates. So for example, if we want five, it's gonna make five for us like this and we can space it out um, just evenly and it's gonna look way better than if we do this manually, right? Um, so that that's basically the tool here. We can also have it so that it doesn't delete the original input. So again, Shift M. Uh, and then we are going to basically do this again, maybe not five, maybe just two. And then if we want to keep the original input, it's going to be us holding the control button and you can see it's gonna keep the input. The control basically allows us to just copy things, right? So if I select this and I hold control while I drag it around, it's gonna make a copy of it. 
And that's basically all I wanted to cover in terms of the simple tools. Hope you guys are able to get started on Vectorworks and just play around with some of these tools. But if you did like uh, this video, please don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one.